problem that we have right now is that we're wasting so much time with prospects who don't have any intent to buy our services. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Joel Irway here and welcome to another very special episode of Sold With Webinars. And today I've got a very special episode for you and a very special topic that I wanna to talk about today. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was on a chat with a good friend of mine who I met in a mastermind. And he said, Joel, I've been following your podcast, I've been following your content on social media, and uh, I've got a question because we are struggling and I was hoping that you could help. Now, this uh, friend of mine is in the medical marketing business and he works in, uh, he helps medical practices uh, increase leads and sales and the whole nine yards. And so I said, okay, man. What's up? Let's talk about it. And this is a very important topic because for those of you who aren't, who aren't getting qualified leads coming into your pipeline, I'm going to walk you through this process for how I would fix this guy's problem. So we said, okay, well, the problem that we have right now is that we're wasting so much time with prospects who don't have any intent to buy our services. Most businesses come from, most of our business come from referrals, right? And our sales calls, they're extremely time intensive. We go through all this effort only to you know, get turned down at the very end when we, when we propose our price. We go through like an audit, then we have a second call with them and a full-blown strategy. And by the time that we get to the price, like, oh my God, I can't afford your services. And so I said, okay, well, there's a couple of things that we could do. So I asked him a bunch of questions. And uh, at the end of it, I said, okay, well, listen, man, like here's essentially what you need to do. This uh, a friend of mine uh, was really struggling because number one, he had all sorts of different price points and different services that he could offer. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but his message and his promise to his prospects w was extremely unclear. So if you wanna get a dialed in marketing and sales process for somebody who can come through your pipeline, who is educated, who knows what they're looking for, who, know, who wants what you have to sell, the core things that I want to have in place are number one, I wanna have a very clear promise of what I can give my prospects, right? Getting crystal clear, like having one core promise of what I wanna get them and that promise is going to pique their interest. It's going to say, yes, I'm interested. Like, okay, cool. Yep, I want that. And once I have that promise dialed in, I have five other elements that basically, so I have six elements in total that I want to have people dialed in on before I have a, a sales call with them or an enrollment call, whatever it is. And the first thing is a clear promise, right? I get them hooked on that clear promise and then say, yes, I'm interested. Tell me more. Well, the next thing that I want them to really understand about my methodology is I want to have a unique mechanism as Todd Brown calls it. Like what is the thing that separates you from all of your other competitors, everything else that they're looking at right now? Like why should they pay attention and what's going to get them to have their aha moment? Like, Oh, that makes sense. Like, yes, I like, I want to implement that unique mechanism into my business. Like you want them to buy into your unique mechanism so they can say, I want that unique mechanism in my business. I want mini webinars for my business. I want a power offer, right? Those are unique mechanisms. So like we want them to start to learn our branded language so they can start to speak our, our brand and, and know what it is that we can do for them. So after they understand what the unique mechanism is, then I want them to learn our methodology, okay? So my methodology that I want them to learn is like my perfect expert model, right? Why do I use that unique mechanism to get my clear promise, my end result? Well, that ties into my methodology. The reason, like the whole reason why we do what we do, like what is the big picture of what we are working towards? Okay. So for me, it's the perfect expert model, meaning I want them to, st I want my, like if somebody wants to launch a high ticket program and they want to launch a course, if, and they are interested in my unique mechanisms, well, let me explain to you why my unique mechanisms work because they're part of this big methodology, which is the perfect expert model. I want them to stop, or I want them to start with selling their highest tiered offer first and then start to scale down and more productize offers. 
Okay, so I go through my whole perfect expert uh, methodology, perfect expert model, so they can understand what it is that my unique mechanisms are contributing towards. All right, so we go through the clear promise, we go through unique mechanism, and then we go through methodology. The next thing that we go through is the process. Like, okay, cool. Like those are kind of all of the elements that we have in place, but like, take me through the process. Now what's step one, step two, step three that I need to go through to really start to implement this. And this is all stuff that people would have on a sales conversation if they were talking from an ice cold lead, right? With the case of my friend who called me up, he was only generating leads from an opt-in form on his website. So he would do some social media posting, and they would search for him and they'd go on his website and they said, oh, this guy does marketing. Let me fill out, you know, an opt-in form and I'll get on a call with them, right? So they were not educated at all on what it is that they do for, you know, to get results for clients. So that's why we now go through the process. We say, okay, cool. Well, step one, this is what we do. We, you know, we map out your power offer. Step number two, we take that power offer and then we build that into um, a, a marketing message for the mini webinar, right? And then step three, we then scale with a long form webinar or we scale with lead generation activities, right? If you go and you check out my, uh, my mini webinar, like those are the three steps that are inside of our process because that's the, those are the steps that we follow to achieve the end result, which is launching a new program and, and launching it within 10 days, all right? So we go through clear promise, unique mechanism, methodology, process. Those are the first four. The fifth thing that we do is we now qualify them. Now it's all about qualification. So by this point, maybe they fill out an application form or they fill out an assessment form saying, okay, awesome. All that stuff makes sense. Like now I'm interested to talk. Now I'm interested into having a sales conversation, uh, a, an enrollment conversation with you or with your team. So what are the things that we need to figure out in terms of qualification? Well, the first thing that I ask them Whenever somebody comes through my pipeline, that's number one, have you watched my presentation where I go through all of this stuff? Because if you haven't, I'm going to send them right back through there and because I want them to learn my language. Okay. So that's the first qualifying question. I only ask like three or four questions. And by that point, like I know whether or not they're a good fit. So they fill out the assessment form. The first question that I ask them is, Hey, have you watched the video? Have you watched my presentation? And if they say no, I just send them right back to say, go check it out, then come back and we'll, we'll have this conversation. Uh, we'll continue this conversation. The second thing that I want them to, to, that I want to figure out is what did they learn about the presentation? Like what about my methodology? What about my presentation that you learned makes you feel this is the right fit for you? So I want them to start to sell me on why they like my process, why they like my methodology. And I also want to learn, like, are they speaking my language yet? Because I want them to be like feeding me back the language that I put in the presentation. So when I ask this question about my prospects and say, you know, what did you like about my process? Like, what makes you feel this is the right process for you? Oh, Joel, I love how you talk about the Tesla model. I love the dissension model. I love power offers. I need a power offer or I hate doing long form webinars. So I need a mini webinar, right? Perfect. Like, like now I know they're in my language. They're in my brand. Like they're very close to the hole here. And the final question that I ask him for qualification, I ask him like, is this something you're looking to, to, um, to take action on now? Or is this a later decision? Very, very important because I do not want to waste anyone's time. I don't want to waste the prospect's time. And here's why. The offer that they're like, my offer today may not be the same offer that I have a week down the road, a month down the road, three months down the road. So if my prospect is not ready right now, it makes no sense to continue the conversation because anything, any questions that I answer for them right now may not be the same answers that I give them when they're ready in a week, a month, or three months. And so that's what I tell them. I said, are you looking to take action now or are you looking to take action later? And sometimes they'll say, oh, well, you know, I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm just trying to explore. I'm tr trying to price shop or whatever. And that's totally fine. They can do whatever they want, but I'm going to end the conversation right there politely. And I'll let them know my offer may not be the same today, a, a week down the road, a month down the road. So come back to me when you're ready and we'll have this conversation because I want to give you the most up-to-date information. Okay. And so if they pass all of those qualifying steps, the last thing that we have is just a friendly Q&A chat. 
I may even let them know some price ranges on, uh, on the qualification step, right? It all depends on how the conversation is going. Many times I do. And if I do, then we just have a friendly Q and A call. But for my, my friend over here who was having, you know, a heck of a time with all of these long proposals and unqualified prospects and wasting his time, it's because he didn't have these six elements in place. He didn't have a clear promise, a unique mechanism, a methodology, a process, a qualification, right? He didn't have any of those things. And if he gets that in place, the enrollment conversation is much more efficient and it takes way less time because now you get on the call and all they want to know is, can you apply this for my business? Can you apply this for my situation? How can we apply this for my unique situation? It's that simple. I say it's simple. It's not easy, but it's that simple. When you break it down into those steps, your enrollment process becomes systematic and it becomes repeatable and it becomes predictable. Make sense? Awesome. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I've got some more episodes coming up for you. Uh, I've got uh, tons of other great content coming up. Uh, be sure to follow us on social media, on email. Check out my check out my um, my new training for high ticket courses. I just updated it, so you can head to highticketcourses.com/webinar and you can check all that stuff out. But if you enjoyed this, please do me a favor, head over to iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts and just give us a five-star rating. If you, if you think it's a five-star rating, give us an honest to goodness, just brutally honest rating. And I greatly appreciate it. So we can get this message out to the masses. If you think it's a four-star, great. If you think it's three-star, whatever, give us your honest feedback and I will talk to you soon. Take care.